Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to a brand new video. Today Ataku Sensei will be covering a popular list, top 10 anime betrayals with the kicker being a weak main character that comes back overpowered. Not gonna lie, there is a high chance most of you have already watched these shows, but have no fear Oni-chan because shit jokes are here, and hopefully you enjoy them to the point you drop a like and maybe a sub. That being said, let's begin. For our first entry, we take you back to an era where people used to talk funny and couldn't enjoy a cold beer after a long hard day. Set during the Prohibition era, 91 Days tells the story of a child that witnessed his parents and younger brother get murdered by the Venetti Mafia family. Huh. Didn't know the Animo Archon was a Mafia boss. After the main character loses everything he holds dear, he leaves both his name and hometown behind, adopting a new identity. Seven years later, he finally has a chance for revenge when he receives a mysterious letter prompting him to return to his hometown. Obliging, he soon encounters the Venetti Don's son, Nero, and seeks to befriend him using the skills he has quietly honed for years. A side note for the dub fans out there, 91 Day's main character is played by Austin Tyndall. The same guy that voiced Ken Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul and Karma from Assassination Classroom. Roka, Braves of the Six Flowers, is up. The main character of the show, and self-proclaimed strongest man in the world, Adlet Mayer, has arrived at the continent of Piena and in hopes of becoming a Brave, aka one of the six chosen warriors to defeat the demon god. Although it doesn't go as smoothly as he had planned. Adlet gets chosen as one of the six heroes shortly after being greeted by Nashatanya, the crown princess, and fellow Brave, setting them on a destined journey to meet up with their fellow heroes. However, when they finally unite, seven heroes are present meaning there is an imposter among them. Ooh, you see what I did there? Imposter... among them... Ah, never mind. Naturally, they all begin to suspect Red to be a fraud. Now on the run, the self-proclaimed world's strongest man must utilize his unique skill set and wit in a fight for his life to identify which member of the group is the true imposter before he gets the boot. A word of advice, if you're still playing Among Us, never choose Red. Nobody trusts Red. At number 8, we have b -toom. The main man of the story is just like you and me. He is a neat, still living with his parents. However, that's where the similarities end, as he is Japan's top player of the most popular online game, b -toom. And just like all good things, his peaceful life comes to an end when he finds himself stranded on an island in the middle of nowhere with brown stains on his pants, as well as a small green crystal embedded in his left hand and no memory of how he got there. To his shock, some dick has decided to recreate the game IRL, with the stakes being life or death. Armed with a bag full of unique bombs known as BIM, the players are tasked with killing seven other fellow participants and taking their green crystals to return home. I'm just going to put this out there in the universe, if someone decides to recreate a game, please let it be a hentai game that doesn't include tentacles or ugly bastards. At number 7, Yona of the Dawn. What is a good romance story without a little bit of backstabbing mixed in? Yona of the Dawn follows Princess Yona on a coming-of-age adventure she has to face after the sudden murder of the king by the betrayal of her beloved cousin, Suk. Forced to escape with only her childhood friend, who happens to be her bodyguard, the naive princess soon discovers that her kingdom is not the idyllic place she envisioned it to be. Poverty, strife, and corruption run rampant making reclaiming the throne nothing more than a wishful fantasy given the kingdom's current state. Well, as you can see on your screens, Berserk is up. 
But before we talk about the show, we would like to thank the man behind the show for this classic. As long as people are still enjoying his work and legacy, he shall not be forgotten. May you rest in peace, Kentaro Mura. Born from the corpse of his mother, a young mercenary known as Guts embraces the battlefield as his only means of survival. Day in and day out, putting his life on the line just to make enough to get by. He moves from one bloodshed to another. After a run-in with the Band of the Hawk, a formidable troop of mercenaries, Guts is recruited by their charismatic leader, Griffith, who to this day still makes me fall into a blinding rage every time I try to revisit the show and see him. I just can't help but grind my teeth at the mere glance of his white slick hair. By the way, did you know there was a real-life medieval soldier named Guts with a metallic arm? At number 5 we have Guilty Crown and yours truly's Guilty Pleasure. Set in Japan 2039, 10 years after the outbreak of the apocalypse virus and the event solemnly regarded as Lost Christmas, the once proud nation has fallen under the rule of an independent military force dedicated to restoring order. Inora Yuzuri, a key member of a guerrilla group that acts as freedom fighters called Funeral Parlor, runs into the weak and unsociable Shu Oma during a crucial operation which results in him obtaining the power of kings. An ability which allows the wielder to draw out the manifestations of an individual's personality or voids. Which covers the first part of the video title, the betrayal part comes in the second half of the show, if I remember right. P.S. Don't listen to people who tell you this show is shit or good. Not even me. If you haven't watched Guilty Crown yet, go on and add it to your list, you might like it. Also, there is this OST, Your Turret by Egoist, and by god it's one of the best anime songs I've listened to. Nearing the end, we have Ajin. The story follows Kei Nagai, a high schooler who survives an accident that was supposed to claim his life, signaling his rebirth as an Ajin. Ajin are mysterious, immortal humans. They are labeled as a threat to mankind as they might use their powers for evil. Since then, whenever an Ajin is found within society, they are to be arrested and taken to custody immediately. So in a way, it's like Tokyo Ghoul, but with more CGI. Decent CGI, not 2016 Berserk CGI. Coming in third place, Blast No Tempest. Yoshino Takigawa, an ordinary teenager, is secretly dating his best friend's younger sister. Can I get a what? What? But sadly, this sly dog's happy days ends when his girlfriend mysteriously dies, and his best friend disappears, vowing to find the one responsible and make them pay for murdering his beloved sister. While Yoshino continues his life as usual, until he is confronted by a strange girl who holds him at gunpoint and his best friend arrives in the nick of time to save him. Now, if you are a well-read guy, or for some reason majoring in English, you might find Blast No Tempest interesting, as it draws heavily on two Shakespeare plays. Hamlet and the Tempest. Coming in second place, Redo of Healer. No, we are not kidding. When an anime makes such a fuss, it has to make it to the list one way or another. And luckily, Redo of Healer's wholesome plot about determination, perseverance, and revenge fits perfectly in this kind of list. When the main character acquired his powers as a hero, who specialized in healing all injuries, it seemed that he would walk the path to a great future. But what awaited him instead was great agony. He was subjected to years of seemingly endless hellish torture and abuse. The mad lad's healing skills allowed him to secretly collect the memories and abilities of those he treated gradually making him stronger than anyone else, to the point of unleashing a powerful healing spell that rewound the entire world to the time before he began to suffer his horrible fate. And just like that, the epic story of how an anime that isn't good enough to be labeled a hentai began. Ken, Yari, Yumi, to kite. Ichiyo, tate ni mo hanashi ko. 
And at first place, the only anime I know that got its third season announced before even having its second season out is none other than The Rising of the Shield Hero. Since 99% of us know the buildup behind the story, I will fastly summarize it. Main character gets isekai along with three other c Surprise surprise, his weapon turns out to be a useless shield he can't fight with. Captain America laughs in the corner. After being bullied, he gets falsely accused of rape by the Thought who was sadly a redhead. Main character goes on the run from the Popo. While on the run, he meets a raccoon and a chicken, and just like that, he becomes OP. Well, I'm afraid we have reached the end of the video. If you are still watching, know that we love you. If you find this video mildly entertaining, then we sure hope you reward us with a like as well as a sub. And if you found it somewhat informative, then a share would be the best reward a small YouTuber could ask for. Until next time, fellas, stay safe. Oh, oh,